What is up guys, this is Charles from Team COG coming at you guys here with my updated Infernoble Knight deck profile and today guys I'm going to showcase you the list I've been testing and it's probably the purest list you're going to find on YouTube. Uh, huge shout out to Rudy Torres, he actually took this list and got 8th, not took this list, but took a list, a Snake Eyes list and got 8th place with it and he's a huge inspiration behind this list here. He actually helped me learn some combo lines, learn some sequencing. He is I think the father of the Ib lines and uh, so this list was heavily inspired by him uh, even though it's not like card for card like what he was playing and it's missing a lot it's like a, i'm not playing a lot of cards that he was not playing in his profile but i'll definitely either put it down in the comments or down in the description so you can check out his top eight profile for sure uh, the one thing i'd like to say is i know in the combos video a couple like last week or two weeks ago that i was showcasing i was using popular i've since cut popular because guys it's unnatural it is really unnatural you play one popular just one and i was seeing like two out of three like every hand I was seeing it like tremendously a lot. Like it's like out of a game of out of a game of match of three, I was seeing it two of two out of my three games, right? So like that's statistically not supposed to happen, and it just kept happening. So at this point, I was like, I might as well just you know play without popular, and that's what I ended up going down and like looking down it. And uh, to be honest with you, I know the ban list could potentially coming up, and everyone's like full into arms on like what they could hit. People are saying they're going to hit the OSS. The people are saying they're going to hit like ash and stuff like that which doesn't really do anything the only thing that hurt us if they hit the original sinful spoil but even then like we're able to still play through it and if this is something you guys want to see like see like pure combos that you can do with the deck i will showcase you guys and i know people are going to be out there where it's like well if you play x card next card next card in your list you can end on this and this and this I, i've literally probably tried it i did not like the way you have to do it um so there's like certain things when i do when i build a deck and everything like that and it just has to be able to play like truly if this deck could not compete right now i would not be showcasing it to you i would not be like even in putting it on a profile but it can the deck the combos and the boards this deck put up this list right here can put up is on par if not just the same as like the snake eye stuff uh however you do lose something because if you're not playing popular you're not playing the infernal flame banshee and that just kind of if you're not playing the banshee that takes away from the level four aspect of the deck where all you need is two level fours to be able to combo and at first i was like that's huge that's tremendous you're gonna like really miss that but i have found out over my testing afterwards that it did not come up enough to really matter for me but if it matters for you by all by all means play the cards you want to play, play the list you want to play, play in front of what you want to play. This is entirely just like how I enjoy and the list that I've been playing. And like I said, if you want to play a pure list and you don't like Snake Eyes or anything like that, and you're tired of seeing Snake Eyes, this is probably the list for you. But definitely, like I said, check out Rudy Torres because if you want to play Snake Eyes and you want to play like all that stuff, go ahead and uh, check out his list because his list will be better for you than what I'm about ready to show you. But without further ado, we're already about like three minutes in. Let's go ahead and jump into the deck profile here and move on. So I'm going to try and make this as fast as I can. You lying ass bitch. Uh, just so we're not keeping you guys here because there's a lot of things to break down on this and I'm not trying to make like an hour long video because like this deck truly is like science. It's like a mathematical equation you got to solve with fire warriors and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start with our first card in the deck. We got three uppercutter and one spar. Uh, this is the best normal summon in the deck and this card does a lot uh, by itself. One uppercutter can literally send you down a hundred different lines to be able to make. Uh, spar is by far not the worst normal summon to like or not hard, bad to open with but it does suck if you open it it is a level four warrior which helps facilitate the combo right it, this card by itself works better with most of our deck than like connector and dolphin did because they weren't fire warriors however i will go ahead and tell you that we do miss the hand knowledge and you can play connector and dolphin if you want to it just requires you to open oliver as the specific extender to be able to play through it uh so that's it anyway this card's pretty nuts. The graveyard effect you can get with Angelica because like with Princess being able to target Angelica, Angelica to send, you send the uppercutter, uppercutter's second effect, which you never got to use before, comes into play to special summon a battle and boxer from our graveyard. Dempsey is a not on XYZ summon, but a on special summon effect. So you're able to special summon Dempsey at a level four for follow-up. And then you just have bodies upon bodies for uh, extra material moving forward. But this is it for the battle and boxers. I really wish there was like maybe like a better, um, some more of them that were really good, but these are in, these are the best. And Konami, give us a super spar, please. Please give us a super spar. But anyway, moving on to the Infernoble side. Uh, I am still on to two O gear. And the reason I'm on to two O gear is because I believe in the five normal summon uh, statistic. And O gear is the second best normal summon to uh, Uppercutter. O gear by itself though is not a one card combo. So that's why our, like, Ogier falls, like, short, right? Ogier by itself doesn't do anything. But if you open Ogier plus any way to Renaud, you have a protected combo with under uh, Gear Freed. So that's, like, why I wanted to let, cut this down to one. I know a lot of Infernoble lists are playing the single name list, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I just don't like the way, the feel of that. I've just not been a huge fan of it, even though I do understand the logic behind it. The entire deck has plenty of search cards to be able to search out your Infernoble Knight names. However, in my, my opinion, and 
And uh, the way that I see it is you'd rather open Ogear than have to search it, right? So if you open Ogear, you can use your Heritage of the Chalice or your Noble Arms Museum or your Durandal to grab something else. Uh, versus having to use that to go ahead and grab the card you need to even play the game in the first place, right? And we move on to two Renault. I know some people play this at one. I, I don't agree with that at all. I think this card is a two or three of, in my opinion, because it is literally the best extender in your deck. And if you're playing the Battle Boxer package, it literally works with every card in your deck. So with that being said, the same logic will apply for most of these, these cards here. You can play them at one. I just prefer to play them in higher numbers. So I'm not wasting searches or valuable searches to get to that card, right? I'd much rather, if I have, especially with Droll rolling around, right, I'd much rather open Ogier and then use my Chalice to get to Renault and then get Drolled and then be able to play versus having to use my Chalice to get to Ogier and not be able to play because I got Drolled because I used my one search, right? So that's just my logic here. This card is, and I also have Collector's Rare and I'll be, I'll be damned. I'll die and be buried before I play one of Renaud. That's just, that's just how it goes. But anyway, moving on, we're playing one Turpin, one Oliver, one Malgus, uh, one Ricky Ardetto, and one Roland. So you don't have to main deck Roland. I just like to main deck Roland because I believe that Roland is, um, this Roland gets you access to Angel Ring. And Angel Ring's kind of crazy, especially in a format where Super Poly's coming back and stuff like that. You wanna be able to get access to it and like solidify your boards, especially um, since the deck is a little bit more fragile with the Lost of His Old and we don't really get hand knowledge anymore like we used to. So like we're kind of like plowing into hand traps freely without seeing them coming. So like our end boards can get disrupted and stuff like that. So our end boards are not like super, huge like they used to be so in my opinion if you're going to end on like charles and gearfried right and your opponent super polyism that's rough but if you're on charles and gearfried and angel ring you still have like a Charles that makes the charles have three just forms of disruption on itself because it is itself as a spell and trap negate it's a pop when something becomes equipped and you have angel ring and then you have gearfried as a monster effect negation so then you're looking at you know like a more solidified board because that super poly they have in their hand is just going to get negated by the angel ring and then if they have bait spells, that's where Charles comes into play. And then you also can make Baron and like negate activations and stuff like that. So like Angel Ring can for sure hit the Super Polys and everything. But if you don't want to play that, you definitely can cut Roland and move it to the side deck. I just like having it main deck. I'd much rather side it out, in my opinion. And that's normally what happens when I'm going into that all-important game number three. When I know I'm going second, I normally side out one Ogier, one Roland, and the Angel Ring for three cards that easily come out and then put in three like board breakers, more hand traps, etc. That is it for the Noble Knights. Uh, Ricky Ardetto is still, I know I haven't really, didn't really talk about him. There's not much to say. He's really cool. Uh, you're, you're actually getting to combo with him in this list like you did back in the day when you had King Arthur because like you're using the uh, power tool Braver Dragon to pretty much turbu turbulence, pretty much the turbulence for, for uh, equip spells to bring out three equip spells and then you're grabbing him off a of Durandal and then when you link off the power tool and your Hida into a princess, joyous trigger summoning this from hand. So it's kind of reminiscent of the first the first build that came out before we got access to Dempsey and stuff like that. Anyway, moving on to these three cards. These three cards can literally be whatever you want them to be. Uh, probably the best thing for them to be would be like Fenrir if you want to play Fenrir. I know that's like a pretty hot popular card. I hate Fenrir in my opinion, I, but I hate it in a good way. I just, um, if I were to play Fenrir, Fenrir would be in the side deck as a good card to side out like the battle boxer stuff for because this, this if you use Spar, you lose your battle phase. So this is like a perfect four card engine to come out for the Fenrir stuff. But you people can get away with it. It's like, it is a powerful card. Um, I just, the way that I, my luck goes, guys, if I were to buy it right now, it'd get banned or limited and I'd lose value on it. So I'm just holding out till nationals. If this is the deck, I take the nationals to, um, pick them up. But anyway, these are just three flex spots for sure. And, uh, it's one red layer, one Flint lady and one Shea Brigadine. And I know some people are gonna be like, whoa, wait a minute. What? So these are just three warriors, uh, Stratos or not Strato, Strato Rosso here. Um, this card right here is just special summon it. And the reason you want to play these cards is because essentially you want to get access to Uppercutter at all times because this card does everything for your deck. It's a one card combo, right? So that means you play a total of uh, four copies of it because you play three Uppercutter and one Rota. Well, since you play these three cards here that are free special summons, these three here plus Durandal get you to combo. So that means all of a sudden you have a bunch of two card combos in the sense of uh, Super Quantum Red Layer plus Chalice gets you to Uppercutter. Super Quantum Red Layer plus Museum. Super Quantum Red Layer plus Durandal already gets you to Uppercutter. And that goes for all of these here. Uh, Shea Brigandine is a really cool card because in testing when we were playing popular, I was able to, it was just another rank level four body you could put up to overlay because like I said, bare minimum, a level four Fire Warrior plus another level four was able to get you to Infernal Banshee. Banshee would detach the level four Fire Warrior, add you popular, special popular, search Snake Eyes, Link, do your shenanigans, use the, the OSS to um, do some crazy stuff. So uh, since we're gonna sacrifice that because of my, in my insane and hideous bad luck of always seeing popular, I decided to keep this in because it still has some pretty cool uh, utility. By being level four, it allows you to extend out. By being level four, uh, it allows you to help make 
your synchro fives. It allows you to move up into making your level nines because it is level four. Uh, you can still use it worst case scenario in conjunction with your up spar to be able to make Dimsey. It's just really cool. It's probably my favorite trap card in existence. So like if I have the opportunity to play it, I'm going to play it. It's also a really good side out too. Um, we're also not maining in perm. Instead, we're playing droplets instead. So it like the, this card literally has no confliction. I uh, do take note though that this is a normal monster. So like worst case scenario, if you use it, you have to link it off into Link Spider to get into things like your uh, Princess and uh, SP, which is not terrible because we are playing Link Spider just to be able to play around Nibs. So like we do have the ability to turn this into uh, a Link monster or stuff like that. Flint Lady is cool because, like I said, it's an extender that get the extra body. Um, pretty much, Uppercutter plus an extender can get you to an Apo for... Can get you to a plethora of things, but for the sake of just explaining what these extenders can get you, um, these three plus Uppercutter can get you to a Apo for three, a spell, and then a Charles with a full spell and trap negate, or you can move forward and get up to, like, an Apo for two, a Charles, and a Princess and Grave, and, like, and some. Um, I'd have to sit down and, like, go through the combo sequence again just to, like, get you the full thing, but that's essentially the science behind it. Uh, red layer has a cool interaction since like if you do open like red layer plus combo plus an extender so you open like red layer uppercutter plus an extender um, you're able to like synchro off into baron before you commit to like things so you're able to just like hard make baron before you commit into like your other play so it's, it's really cool because it's level five so you're just able to turn it and the ib synchro into baron which is really cool but that is it um, again if you don't want to play those three just play finner for the last fire warrior uh, we're on to Immortal Fingers Gear Free. This is the best main deck boss monster I've seen in a long time. This card is cracked at being able to non-target gobble things up, which is pretty insane. It gets huge, especially against Raid Raptors, uh, especially since they're popular with their big boss monsters. This card can get kind of big and get up to like 45 if you equip the right things to it. If not bigger, uh, especially with like, you have the Museum, which gives it 500. It can attack something, equip something, which makes it 4,000. And then if you have like Roland Engrave, you can make it... Uh, 45 which allows it to crash into things which is pretty it's nice that this deck like this card is literally the answer to those towers like monsters just because of how big it can get for the brick of the deck sadly we are playing one back into the world chalice i was really wrong about this card uh in conjunction with joyous i thought joyous summoned any warrior from hand it has to summon a fire warrior so truly if you open this card it is kind of rough and that was the instance i kept having not only was i opening popular sometimes i was opening this with it and that just kills everything if you would see this in your hand you can still combo however it seemed popular and it just kind of hurt tremendously so now we're just down to the one beckoned, like this is the one brick that you don't want to see in your hand. So statistically, you should never see it. And by the law, right, whatever card I put in for popular's place, I should see in place of popular. So more testing and stuff, we'll see that. But if you see this card in your hand, it's not the end of the world. You can still do some pretty crazy things. Uh, if you do happen to get Nib, you turn the Nib token into Link Spider and then you can specialist from your hand, which is kind of unique. But um, Ib can summon this card from the graveyard or deck, so do keep that in mind. If you do have to start your turn by normal summoning this and then doing some shenanigans to get a level one tuner out, and then you're able to get make Ib later on the combo, then you either synchro off or link off Lib or Ib, excuse me, you're able to grab this from the graveyard, which is an extra body, which is really cool. For the final tr uh, hand trap, or the final monster, I should say, which is a hand trap. It's three Ash Blossom. I don't care what strategy you're playing. I don't care if you're like, if you believe in playing full sin, playing 15 plus hand traps. I think Ash should just always be among them. Uh, play Ash plus your board breakers if you want to, because Ash literally stops and hits everything, uh, which is extreme, insanely nice. It stops branded fusion. It stops those pot cards. I literally, man, if I see someone pot of extravagance for six, I'm ashing it because that means they're digging. Uh, pot of extravagance, just literally a draw one for those like non-extra strategies. And pot of desires is literally a plus one too. Uh, for all those like other decks like sword soul and everything so you just want to have something to answer those and i think ash is like the perfect hand trap it hits everything it's very low impact if you ask me especially um nowadays but ash is just one of those cards where like i yes it's low impact but sometimes man sometimes one one ash on the wrong thing ends your whole turn and that goes for everybody out there so you just always want to just stay strapped with ash in my opinion i don't really think i need to like even explain more with it so uh, moving on to the spell cards i am on to three heritage of the world chalice i know some people have cut this thing and played it at uh two i don't disagree you don't see bonfire being played at two you see bonfire being played at three and that's like pretty much with any rota like card uh, this card is pretty much better than that because it can grab literally your field spell if you need to so it's like an additional form of uh, terraforming and then grab your equip spells it can grab any noble knight name so like this card is cracked and also do take note this card can be belled that's another that's a downside to this is since it can add from the graveyard too it can be belled uh, however most of the time uh, players won't read that they'll just like you can activate this they'll have bell and they won't do it because they didn't read and uh, it's not your job to, you know, read to them. This ain't story time or anything like that. They can pick up a card. They can they can read. But anyway, um, yeah, just three of that. Moving on to the most custom card we have is Triple Museum. Uh, this card is 
a custom card. This, this card being able to like still do whatever, like it's okay we lost his ult because since this card in Angelica exists, we're still able to do some crazy stuff and still at least be competitive in the slightest sense. Pay all Fire Wars, gave 500, pay 12. Pay 12, add a Noble Arms, and then you can once per turn move a Fire Warrior or a Noble Knight, I believe, uh, from your Spell and Trap Zone up to the main Monster Zone. That is a not a once per turn, or that is a not a hard once per turn, so if you have multiple copies of it, uh, it's, uh, you can use it multiple times. Uh, if you open Museum, it pretty much guarantees you're going to make double Charles, which is pretty crazy, because you're going to grab the second museum off of the um, off of the Angelica. And sometimes, man, if you're like if you are reading a droll or you know your hands like weak to droll, you might want to go ahead and resolve this card so that you can go ahead and search, and then they hit you with droll. You still can because you have to be able to pay, use the first effect to use the second effect. So um, that's where like you want to use this card as your first action so that you're able to go ahead and get utilize the second effect because if you don't, the card's really useless. Uh, that just allows you to play through droll or stuff like that. Moving on to the Infernoble Arms, we're on to Double Durandal, one Almus, one Joyous, and this card should have been a Noble Arms, but it, for all lack of terms and better purposes, it is Noble Arms because it has Angelica on it. But this is it for the equip spells. We're not, we know without his old, no need to play like Phoenix Blade or any like DDR or anything. Um, I have played with just like this kind of ratio like this, and I have caught myself not being able to use Museum. And you always want to have Museum live, so that's why I think the four, the count, the four ratio here is really good because like you always want to have it live. But I'll go quickly explain what these four do. So all Noble Arms or these Infernoble Arms have like two effects. They have the effect that you can use while they're equipped and they have the effect if the monster they're equipped to do gets sent to the graveyard. So Durandal, as you level five or lower fire warrior, if the monster it's equipped to gets sent to the graveyard, it's a monster reborn that locks you into warriors. Almus allows you to trade itself out and, and attach the appropriate equip from deck or graveyard. And then if it is sent to the graveyard, you can add a fire warrior back from your graveyard or your banished. Joyous allows you to tr to grab a Fire Warrior from your graveyard, add it to your hand, and then if it is the monster is sent uh, that is equipped to, it lets you special summon one Fire Warrior from your hand. And then of course we know Angel Ring. Angel Ring says the first spell card that it would be activated is negated. And I like I said, I'd much rather have this card main deck because it's an easy side out. And again, it just gives you an extra layer of disruption. It, it allows those hands and boards where like because you get disrupted, especially in a format with 15 hand traps, man, the likelihood of someone not seeing a hand trap is pretty pretty low. And if you have bad luck like I do, they're going to have like three plus hand traps. So it pretty much means it to where if you can just make Charles and trigger and get access to Roland, which you do in order to do your standard combo sequence, you're going to at least end on like a spell negation that's super powerful. Anyway, that's it for the equip spells. Moving on to all the other spells. Uh, I like three droplets. Droplets is pretty cool. I've actually been able to use the uh, effect. I don't know if, if people have checked out Team Samurai's video with Pack, where I've actually added a card and then on resolution, uh, they try to quickly droll me. And you can use the falsehood of them not allowing you, not, you know, confirming with you if you have an effect and stuff like that. Uh, so I've been able to actually use Droplets on resolution, sending a monster to get one more search, which is really cool. But that that's not why you play it. You play this card because it is a phenomenal card going first and a phenomenal card going second. It's a damage calculation card too as well. So it lets you like push for like, pretty big damage and stuff like that because your monsters are all huge and again like droplets we all know what it does man well if you send a monster spell or trap whatever you send your opponent cannot respond with you're mostly sending um monsters and spells it's crazy another again another good flex spot to side out with this is probably uh, if you want to decide out but this card is just very versatile and going first or going second that i recommend it stays in there worst case if you open it you set it right uh moving on to the anti-hand trap stuff in my in my list i we are rocking double talents and one call by the grave not much more can be said uh, it's pretty much a lot of times like we have enough extenders and stuff like that and you know your first hand trap as long as it's not in perm you're able to look at the hand and rip a card which is pretty nice and you norm nine times out of ten you'll have an extender so like the first hand trap you get hit with doesn't matter you just get to punish them with tactics uh call by the grave is a one of right we want to be able to hit the shifter and the droll if it happens moving on to the rest of the spells the one of spells in my opinion one world legacy succession searchable off of ib one rota searches out our entire deck no point in explaining uh, one OSS and one one for one. So these two cards pretty much do the same thing. They get you Ricardetto, and there's not really much more to say. If you and then like opening this card is not the end of the world because like you're literally going to be able to make your main boss monster is a link one that points down. So worst case scenario, you're always going to be able to succession something back. Uh, Rota, no point to explain that. But uh, again, I've not really noticed. Uh, popular would have been this one for one, and in the few hands and few rounds I've gone, um, I have been seeing one for one in my hand. It is so much nicer than seeing popular. Uh, just because like you do your normal combo they end up hitting you enough one for one still go combo uh, it's pretty crazy that is it for the main deck i believe it is 41 cards in the main if not 40 i think it has it's 40 or 41 in my i'm not going to count them right here for you but i think it is 40 or 41 but uh, like i said nothing i would really change here this is probably the purest list you can get uh, i really have enjoyed it so much but they are a lot as you can see there's a lot of like personal uh bias stuff in here like shade bring a dean one for one and stuff like that um, so by all means, play the deck the way you want to, test it out. But this is what I've been having a lot of good luck with uh, so far for the main deck. 
We'll move on to the side deck here. Or not the side deck, the extra deck. I don't have a side deck put together. Well, I do have a side deck, but it's like relevant to only my locals and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, we'll move on to double Charles, one Roland, one Angelica, and one other Charles. So this is the, all you need is for Infernobles. Uh, I'm not going to lie, man. I, outside of his old being busted, I kind of miss his old. Actually, I miss his old a lot. Um, but I kind of miss having that like OG Noble Knight in the in the extra deck. But it's I guess this is an Inf Infer Noble Knight, so like you have to have them all here. But not really much can be say. Blue Chew Charles is insane. Should have stayed Charlemagne. Roland's pretty nice because like you can hard make it and stuff like that through certain combo sequences. Um, sometimes like you get drilled and you just make this guy, and he allows you to dump during the end phase, and then like it's a choice to add. So like you can just dump Angel Ring, and then during the end phase, Charles can pick up Angel Ring from the graveyard. Uh, Angelica. Angelica is literally what's going to keep this deck going. This card is literally custom. Being able to search, then dump, then summon, and then it's just kind of crazy. This card works insane with Princess, by the way. And then the OG Charles, uh, which is just part of, like, staple, right? It's part of the combo. We have to play, play at least one of these to be able to, like, make the big Charles. And it allows you to, like, make Baron and stuff like that. So that is it for the Infernobles. Uh, just going to on the, the Link side of Link Spider because, like, Nib exists. Little Knight because it's there. Hita, Fire Charmer Blaze is the best Link too, especially because you can, um, this card could also be traded out for IP, but I have found that, especially in this format, currently in Fire format, like, why wouldn't you play this? Uh, if finally, if, like, you know, Fire subsides and, you know, like, the only thing that you could potentially get out of the graveyard is just, is only Ash Blossom and just Ash Blossom, maybe you move to IP just because then, like, IP can, like, quick effect and worst case and, like, link into something, but... Uh, then we're on to one princess. Uh, princess is nutty, man. This card should should have been a little bit more fair. Uh, the fact that it doesn't have to destroy both monsters it targets just allows like you to like abuse Angelica. Pretty crazy, but it is really good in this deck. And it kind of makes me understand why they hit Isolde because like Isolde would have made this card like right away. Like it's just kind of it's it's kind of crazy. But anyway, we still play it. Uh, one Appalosa because they are certain lines you can use to make it. You can either hard make it with like three to four monsters, or you can use like Power Tool Braver to negate this card to stop you from being locked into fires and then make it that way. And then one Ambla, uh, Ambla Whale. That's all. I'm not going to try it. Amphibious Stormship Ambla Whale. Uh, you don't have to play this card. However, I just had some instances where like I needed something to get the princess off the field. But you have a lot of ways to get princess off the field. But like I really like to get like a valuable princess, right? That's what was happening. And a lot of testing, like I could have get this off the field, but it just kind of felt kind of eh. But um, Ambla Whip is just something you can go into if you are fire locked. So like... If you can't use Charles, or you've already used Charles to pop something, and you can't use Charles to get rid of it, you don't open the OSS, uh, you just can go into Amblo Whale, which this card right here is kind of insane. Like, no one's going to tell you that this card's bad. Uh, but it is a flex spot because, like, most of the times, if you can get rid of the uh, Promethean Princess, you're going to get rid of it, and then you just can use Princess Target Angelica, which it, it does bonus stuff. So this is definitely a flex card in the extra deck if you really want to. But moving on, uh, we are moving on here to Ibsold. This card is actually kind of insane. Uh, it kind of acts like Isolde for the deck, in a way. On Summon, adds you Succession. When it leaves the field, it summons you a monster. So, kind of in a sense, remember, Isolde on Summon adds you a monster that you couldn't use, and then you paid for Cost and Summon from the deck. So, like, in a sense, it does the same thing. But it is a also pretty cool because it's a level 5 tuner. Like I said, with Red Layer, you're able to, like, early Synchro for Baron, which is kind of cool. Um, but not much more really there. Power Tool Braver Dragon. This card is literally Turbulence for equipped spells. Worst case scenario, if, turb if something happens, Power Tool is a walking in perm. Uh, as long as it, as long as you can send an equip spell equipped to it. But for the most part, on summon this card equips up to three equip spells from deck or graveyard to it, and then you can just do some crazy stuff from there. This card literally gets access to Durandal, uh, Joyous, and uh, Almas. Kind of space the other one there. Uh, Baron, Baron de Floor. Uh, you make this. You can make this uh, early on with power tools. So like the next step you can do, you can like do your searches and stuff. And if you have a level one extent, if you have any way to get access to your level one tuners, you can just synchro power tool off with the. Um, Level 1, and then you trigger your equip spells to summon out Ricardetto. You make Baron. Baron's in protected. Then you can link up into Princess, and your Princess bring back Ricardetto, Ricardetto, on, effect, on summon effect to Reborn. And you can do some crazy stuff there. It's still insane. Uh, moving on to the XYZs. Uh, one Dempsey. You only need one. I really wish we got this in a higher rarity, but Dempsey's insane. Also because it lets you play under a droll, because like, you can also dump, uh, which is pretty cool. You can send um, some pretty crazy things. I think one time I actually had to like overlay and I ended up not using Uppercutter to make it. I ended up using Hard Open Spar to make it on summon. What was it? I'm trying to remember. I ended up using the uh, effect to send the Uppercutter and then Uppercutter Reborn the Spar and I was able to do some crazy things. But that's also right. Um, this card can, Angelica sends any Fire Warrior, right? So you use Angelica during your, once you've established your board, you use the Princess to target Angelica. Angelica sends Uppercutter, Uppercutter, uh, Princess banishes and leaves princess or the Promethean princess will then summon itself 
and then since you sent Uppercutter by a card effect to Angelica, Angel uh, Uppercutter will trigger to summon out Dempsey, and Dempsey lets you add a level 4 lower fire warrior, or send another one on summon, so it gives you more follow-up for that following turn, which is pretty crazy. Uh, right here, we are playing the final card of the extra deck is a Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. Uh, not a big fan of this card. I probably should be. I just couldn't get my hands on one in time. Uh, Baguska, because if you do get shifted, it is pretty rough. So you, you know, you just Baguska and pray. But this is what we're playing there for now. Yeah, that, that's pretty much just all it is. Is because like it just should be Baguska, guys. Like 100%. If you normal summon Uppercutter or like Standby Face that hit you a shifter and you have full combo, like you might as well just go Uppercutter into Spar, special out that, make the Baguska and pass and just pray. And hopefully you open cards like um, Droplets and or like if you're siding in or playing different cards, you open like Hand Traps, Droplets, Ash, Imperm, Veiler, etc so that you can like hopefully defend and hold the line with Baguska, but this is a good card for the time being, a good space holder, but, and then of course, the Nib token, but uh, that is it, guys, for this list. Like I said, it's probably the purest list you're going to find, and I've had plenty of success with it. I know you can play the Snake Eye stuff. I know you can play like different cards, but I'm just not a fan of that type of stuff, especially like you guys, if you guys have been a fan of the channel for a long time, you guys know like I'm not a huge fan of the when it's pretty much what flavor of snake eyes are you playing right i'm not like a big fan of those type of formats what flavor of this best deck are you playing oh you're not playing that variant you're not playing the best so i decided to try and keep the deck as pure as i could like to the founding of it and it still performs pretty remarkably um statistically all the ratios and stuff are pretty on point and i've had great success with it in my testing and everything every now and then you just get a bad hand right it's Yu Gi Oh, so don't take that to heart but again take this list as just a backbone so that you can Take it and uh, build it the way you want to. But anyway, if you guys, like I said, if you guys want to see combos of the pure variant, uh, just let me know and I'll try my best to make them. But this is Charles from Team COG signing out.